Time to talk to Brian Ross. It's time for Real News. Brian joins us on a Thursday morning. We take a look at some of the stories that are floating around out there. Good morning, Brian. Good morning to you, Marshall. You know, very, uh, a very interesting couple of days for uh, President Joe Biden uh, the past couple of days. I'll say, uh, and he's scrambling uh, as his approval ratings seem to have slipped and then bounced back up, uh, scrambling to take on the uh, supply chain uh, kinks that are threatening Christmas presents, I guess. It's all his fault. Uh, still trying to deal with uh, a couple of recalcitrant Democrats who won't go along with the agenda. Uh, plus, you know, a host of other issues. Uh, you wonder why someone would want to be president given all this. Uh, but, you know, these are these are probably the weakest days so far in his uh Still young administration. Well, I like the fact uh, what he's doing with private industry in trying to release the bottleneck. I mean, the the port of Los Angeles, if they can, if they and and also uh, the unions going along with it, if they can uh, go and, and they they have they've gone to twenty four hour uh, round the clock work. Uh, that's forty percent of the goods that come into the country. So I mean, right. but but the whole thing about the supply chain is uh, he can make it better in the United States a little bit. But you can't make it better because I found this out uh, with my car. I mean, I, I, I had a uh, not with my I had a computer chip go bad, and oh. and and they it it took almost three and a half weeks to get to to get it in and, and get it fixed, uh, and so what we do here can cure the bottleneck here, but the bottleneck which is all over the world, uh, the United States president can't handle, and I think I think. Industry is going along with him on this. I know that most of the major retailers and Amazon and other ports now are being asked to do the same thing. But, you know, what effect it's going to have? Well, Americans have to stop. I hate to say this, but if you buy on Amazon, it comes from China. It doesn't matter if you order it from somebody in America that's listing on Amazon. They're getting their goods from China. So A lot does, right. You know, people have you to... Know, but one of the things, Marshall, that has taken place is uh, it's called the just-in-time delivery status, where nobody has a stockpile of anything. It comes and ships you know, immediately. When it got disrupted because of the pandemic, uh, to get it back in uh, smooth uh, operations has taken some time, and there are backlogs. And part of the things we hear from... Uh, truckers and others, it takes uh, sometimes days to get unloaded uh, because the weakest link in this chain, the supply chain, are sometimes lowly paid uh, warehouse workers uh, who haven't come back. Uh, And so it's taken a long time, and there are backlogs there. And part of the problem, of course, is uh, maybe we have to pay more for uh, workers. Uh, You know, good for them. Uh, That's that's one of the problems. But also it strikes me that... um, (laughs) Is it really fair to be blamed the President of the United States that there's not going to be Christmas presents? That, 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 no, of course it's not, but it's politics. That's yeah. the way politics has, right. turned, uh, right. has turned into. I mean, uh, blaming the president for Christmas presents instead of uh, instead of working on major bills that could put people back to work, that could help our infrastructure and more. Uh, that's the that's where our politics sits right now. Uh, you're right. more concerned about Christmas presents than the infrastructure bill uh, and 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 putting money into the economy and. That just drives me crazy. And it's not just a Republican problem. There's some Democrats that are there, too. Without, without a doubt. But, you know, some of these narratives, as you take a look at them from a distance, you just wonder why uh, our buddies in the media go down that road. Is that, is that, is that really uh, the most important thing going on? A lot of this gets spun up, I have to say, from uh, Fox News and takes over into the, into the mainstream. It's- a lot of those questions there, and it's just... Strikes me as uh, way off base. You know, it is, and uh, and and I always say this. Uh, even though we are on uh, Facebook, we are on Instagram, uh, we're on social media as a radio station, simply because we have to. Uh, sure. th- th- that doesn't help the problem either, because you know we. Uh, I'll put it this way: every uh, whenever there's a COVID case in the Region One school district. Uh, our superintendent, Lisa Carter, who is just a great superintendent, uh, and the administration, they issue a press release. 
And so I put the press release on, a shortened press release, mentioning where the COVID cases are and how it's not going to affect school or how it's going to affect school. People say to me, Marshall, you're just you're just trying to drum up support for vaccinations. And I said, you don't understand the purpose of news. No, uh, the superintendent doesn't want people uh, talking and spreading things on social media about COVID cases. So they release the information so everybody knows and they can't, they don't have to get it from absolutely, social media. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that's how it, that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, I mean that's not, that's exactly how it's supposed to work. But people people get away from that. Well, we'll get away from Biden for just a second, and uh, you know, look at what's happening in Beirut. Three dead uh, due to a, a gunfight, and the gunfight was because people. Uh, it's the start of investigating about that big explosion, if you remember, that happened in right. Beirut. You know, that's just that's an amazing story. That, and, and that place is falling apart once again. You know. Uh, it was once considered the uh, Paris of the uh, Middle East, you know, <clears throat> beautiful sort of buildings there. I've been there myself, uh, but they cannot get along. And, you know, that explosion, which was uh, so devastating, they really still have not recovered from that. Well, we'll go from the, that explosion to, okay, Steve Bannon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the other people uh, who are being subpoenaed uh, by the January 6th panel. Uh, and uh, I don't know how he can claim executive privilege because at the time of those things happened, he wasn't working for the White House uh, and the president no. is no longer in office. Uh, I, I don't know if, if these three people or other people, uh, if, if, if the Congress has enough guts to send them to jail uh, for not uh, re- re- replying to the subpoenas. Well, they they refer it to the Department of Justice if the uh, committee says yes, and the committee, uh, including Republicans, apparently will refer to the full uh, House floor, and if the full House approves it, it's sent to the Justice Department for prosecution. Uh, and the Democrats have the votes, not by a huge majority, but they have the votes if they want to, uh, and that'll be the showdown. You, know, you have to wonder, what is it that they're afraid of coming out that, uh, you know, they won't testify that Trump has urged them all not to talk about. I guess there is the larger principle that uh, officials of the government giving advice to the president, there is executive privilege. Steve Bannon was not an official of any, uh, he had no government post whatsoever, just an outside advisor, outside troublemaker. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting uh, case in point to look at, and there's so many more people that are going to have to be uh, subpoenaed. I can't wait till they subpoena the pillow guy. Uh, what what he's going <laughs> to say? Whether he's going to claim executive privilege? No, really, it's you know, Washington somehow has just become this almost like a cartoon center uh, with with some of the things that come out of Washington. It's, it's just amazing. I'll say, and and, and really, uh, you know, what is it they are afraid of coming out? We thought we knew kind of what happened there, but clearly we don't know all that happened behind the scenes on January 6th and January 5th and January 4th. And these people, uh, they have the ability to reveal what happened there. And so uh, they've also subpoenaed uh, you know, the uh, Justice Department official who tried to create his own coup within the Justice Department for him to also testify and the Biden administration so far has said we will not assert executive privilege. Um, you know, they've got to be careful about that because down the road uh, that could undercut the uh, overall status of uh, executive privilege, you know, which is a useful thing because you want the uh, advisors of the president to be able to give advice freely without having it on the front page of the newspaper. You know, uh, we carry uh, BBC News here as well as NPR News. And uh, when I wake up in the morning, uh, besides uh, Googling and stuff like that, one of the stories, once again, uh, in Norway, uh, a bow and arrow suspect uh, who killed uh-huh. people. He was known by police and and uh, he became a terrorist when he converted uh, to Islam. And, you know, this is such a slap in the face when you see all these stories uh, to Islam because Islam itself is, is not is not supposed to be a a, a violent religion, uh, but just different offsets and different rules. And every time something like this happens, once again, it it raises a specter of outrage of Americans against Islams, even though this didn't happen in this country. Well, you know, uh, religious extremists uh, distort the religion and distort the message, uh, whether it's with Islam or Christianity or even, you know, sometimes the Middle East, uh, the Jewish faith. Uh, the distortion yeah. of the religious message uh, leads them to justify and rationalize, you know, acts of violence. And you know, no religion really 
uh, exhorts or you know, puts forward that violence is an answer to any problem. Uh, and we see extremists, you know, all around the world. There's a there's an ugly trend there, and it's uh, it's you know people are feeling. I guess uh, disassociated, they're feeling uh, on their own, and they've turned to uh, uh, a distorted view of their religion uh, to give them reason to act out. All right. Now, I, I have to go to this story, because uh, uh, yesterday I, I didn't feel well, so I went home early, and I had the TV on, uh, which I very rarely do, and I was flipping channels, and for about an hour and a half, uh, it was all about uh, Blue Origin and William Shatner, uh, going up for his 16-minute uh, ride into space and down. Now, I'm not against uh, Jeff Bezos and all these other rich people doing this. I think of the exploration and the opening up of uh, suborbital uh, plane rides and plane. I think it's all great for the future. But I, and what I just don't understand, and it wasn't just CNN. Every every network except for CBS, I'll say, except for CBS, uh, did this uh, hour hour and a half coverage. Uh, of basically what was a 15-minute flight. I know we live in amazing times. I know it's hard to believe that a 90-year-old man without any training or, or can get into a capsule and fly into space and come back, but is it really worth an hour and a half of news coverage? Well, it's only worth it if people are watching, and uh, that's what the, the network bosses would say. If people are going to watch, well, we're going to do it. And because uh, they're not making judgments on what's more important, uh, you know, they're not, they're not covering certain congressional hearings about uh, what's going on. They're you know, choosing to do that. Uh, you know, uh, Chetner, <laughs> uh he talked longer about the experience than the actual experience took place. <laughs> he certainly did. He <laughs> certainly he did. Went on and on and on and on. Gee. And they kept it uh, on. At some no. point, at some point, say, like, "Hey, man, uh, we get it." <laughs> hey, Brian, I uh, used to work for a very short period of time because it wasn't a job I liked. I used to work at a TV station, and uh, I had I was a stage manager, and so when we were yeah. covering things like that, and someone was out in the field on, uh, on a live re, on a live thing, uh, I, and you had your headphones on, and I would constantly hear constantly hear this is back in 1970 71 i would constantly hear uh the director in my earphones talking to the reporter in the field saying wrap it up too much information obscures the good information and i think we need we, we need more directors like that in the networks well you know one of the hardest things to achieve is concision you know it takes it takes somebody with some brains and some thoughts to take a lot of information to, and pack it into you know a few sentences so you make it clear. You know you have to know a lot to say a little, but uh, sometimes there's just this uh, verbiage. And frankly, on some of the cable channels, they have so much time to fill that it's the opposite. They let them just go on and on and yeah. on. You know, and and the talk is cheap. You know, reporting is not so cheap, but the talk is cheap, and that's why you get what you get on that cable news. All right, one final thing that I want to make a note on, because uh, it, despite all the, the troubles President uh, Biden is, is going through right now, uh, I think it's great. He's making a major push for offshore wind power. Uh, and, and right. I, I, you know, you, you've got offshore wind power. Uh, you've got the winds that constantly blow. Uh, I mean, these are things that, that we have to look at. And, and investigate uh, as Americans. And once again, the minute he mentions this, uh, the people pop up against it. I, it's, it's, I'm just amazed. It is amazed, and a lot of them are the uh, people that uh, mine coal and use and oil. And they are trying to fight against this because they can see the future. It's not looking good for their industry, uh, but it seems a folly to me. I, I, I think that you know the goals of reducing carbon emissions, you know, are so important and uh, so difficult. Uh, this is one first step. They're going to identify certain areas for our essentially federal waters and allow private companies to build uh, wind uh, windmill farms, essentially, and, and and pump the electricity from offshore. In and it's you know it's quite quite feasible to do that. You know the winds offshore are blowing all the time. I think the first real test project is going to be one around uh, Martha's Vineyard, which they fought long and hard, and finally uh, have the. Uh, the wind the power uh, supporters have prevailed. Well, it's uh, it, you look at the uh, the situation as a whole, uh, and no one's talking about the infrastructure package anymore, and that's indeed a sad thing. Well, it is, and Senator Kristen Sinema, who is at the heart of it, is over in Europe raising money for her campaign. So uh, you, know, you wonder about the priorities 
she's been the most difficult one to read. She won't talk to reporters, won't talk to people in her own Congress uh, in the Senate, only will talk to the White House. And she's made it clear, I, I know what I want. But what she wants, uh, or most important, and the biggest stumbling block is she's against these efforts to lower the cost of prescription drugs. She has received huge donations from the pharmaceutical industry, and she is uh, blocking it. She's the obstructionist right now. And I think there's already talk in Arizona of running a Democratic candidate against her in uh, 2024 when she's up for re-election. Well, all I think, what I think of her is I think these horrible big pharma commercials that are on TV now, absolutely full of lies. And uh, how you're allowed to do that, I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, you say lies, but, you know, it's distorted. But, you know, there's a grain of truth in all of that. And, yes, uh, they, do to me, they, they do need to have a profitable business to do the kind of research to develop new drugs. But, you know, the uh, the scale here is so much different. And the, uh, the, the fact that they could bring down costs by billions of dollars a year, which means cost to each of us, uh, much less, uh, you know, seems like a worthy goal, supported by most people, except for Senator Sinema. Amazing time we live through, Brian. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we, you, know, you know what, Myron, we're living through it. We're, yeah. we're in a historical era, and I don't think history uh, will look back kindly on those who have uh, obstructed uh, what's going on, who oppose uh, wind farms, uh, who oppose uh, you know, pre-K universally. I think history in the future will look unkindly at those people. And to the uh, columnists that I see write about uh, that they, they want Joe Biden to stop his laid-back presidency, I don't. We had eight years of anything but a laid-back presidency, and I think we need it. We, we need a laid-back presidency now. I'm enjoying it. All right, Brian, we'll speak to you next week. Absolutely. Take care. Uh, Brian Ross and Real News here on Robin Hood Radio. You can always find it on demand at RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Real News with Brian Ross.